There's a winter storm warning and we are supposed to get 8 to 10 inches of snow overnight. So I picked up this. What's happening Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda out in my garage here. A little chilly and that is because the cold weather is coming and we are supposed to get a bunch of snow tonight. And I picked up this Lithelli snow thrower cordless 2 by 20 volt battery. So this thing is actually supposed to be pretty competent and I thought man we'd put it together tonight, see what the snow's like in the morning and try to throw as much snow with this thing as possible because this snow blower was only like $219. So an unbelievable price for a cordless snow blower that hopefully will be able to throw a lot of snow. And now I wanna mention that I used to have gas snowblowers. I've reviewed them in the past. I don't actually even have gas snowblowers because I didn't wanna to have to put gas in it and then gas stabilizer and then check the oil and change the oil and go through that startup process. The electric snow throwers are so much more convenient. You just charge up the batteries, throw them in there, they go, it's kind of silent you don't wake up the whole neighborhood and so hopefully this one will just do its job so let's get it together and try it out all right pretty big box here but it's not too terribly big it's kind of heavy but i actually brought it in myself just carried it but i'm a beast of a man so let's cut it open and see Ooh, little surprise here there's a nicer box right inside so the brown box is just for protecting it so let's get it out I will say, even the box is pretty nice. It's kind of apple-like. If it's white and orange and black, I love those colors. Pretty cool. Unbox this baby. And there it is in all its glory. <laughs> Actually, I think this is going to be pretty easy to set up. I can see the handlebars right here, and it looks like they kind of might be attached. And the snowboard's right there. So the nice thing about electrics over the gas, too, is I find the assembly is just a lot easier. So let's get it all laid out and just see what we have to do to put it together. All right, I got everything laid out and there are some pieces but there aren't as many pieces as maybe i thought so first of all i just want to show you that the top handle and the control bar is actually attached here obviously the bars aren't but there's a cord there looks like there is this piece in between that we're gonna have to put together and it comes with the little hardware right there so those knobs will just kind of hold those two bars together and attach it to there looks like we've got to put the chute on there and then there is a rod right here which will probably control the chute so i'll read the instructions about where to put that now one thing i will say is that we get the batteries right here and i want to show you that these 20 volts are not that big i mean they're kind of like a vhs tape or something so that kind of worries me a little bit just because i'm just hoping that these have enough capacity for me to be able to snow blow my entire driveway because i actually have a pretty big driveway. Now, they have a little button there that shows the battery charge state. So 75%. I noticed the other one is too. And there's a little notch there. So I think that's where it kind of latches in. It doesn't come with a fancy charger. You get these USB-C to USB-A cords right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get these plugged into a charging block inside just to make sure that these are topped off by the morning when we have to get out there and try to snow blow. So it'll be interesting to see how these work on my very long driveway but if they do a pretty good job, I think you can feel pretty comfortable that a more standard driveway is going to be easy to do with this. So let's get on it. So there are the batteries charging up. All right, let's finish up with the rest of the snowblower. All right, so to assemble this, the first thing I'm going to do is get this middle bar right here. You can see this little tab right there, and I think that is going to face down. And then you're just going to basically slide this on to the lower bar here and then you are going to grab these knobs take off the bolt here and just thread it through there and then tighten this down and you'll have at least one on either side so that's the first thing that we're going to do and if you're using this video to assemble it, I just want to mention here that this cable that goes up to the upper portion of the bar, I just changed the orientation so that it's over the top of this. I don't know that it has to be. I think it might be able to clip down, but I thought instead of having it draped down. So that's the way I'm going to do it right now. And hopefully that's the right way to do it. So this side is on. Just do the same thing on the other side. And then we can get on to the next piece. And now this upper handlebar will attach basically in the same way. There's some holes right there. And again, you're just gonna use those knobs. It looks like there are two holes here, so you can adjust it about an inch depending on what height you want it. And one thing that I wanna say here, and I like that I ran the cord on the top, is that it looks like 
the bar is going to go up like this. So you'll have this activation bar here free on the top. Looks like there's a start button on the side there. So it'll just go on just like that. All right, next we're going to install the chute control lever here. There's also a cotter pin in the little plastic bag, which you're gonna need. And if you go down here to the back, what you're gonna see is a little sleeve right there. And that is going to allow you to put this in there. Now, I haven't really changed the orientation of this. Hopefully it is where it's supposed to be for kind of like a neutral position. So if you just unbox it and you don't play with it, then I think you can slip this in here. Now, one thing I wanna show you is I have it with the handle down. So what you're gonna do here is kind of feed it through here. That's gonna be the support. And then I turn the handle down and then I slip it back into the little sleeve on the bottom. And then you're gonna put this cotter pin through the hole and the rod to hold it in place. So that's what it should look like when it's done. And now if I just go back here, what we might be able to see is the shoot move. If I turn this, might be a little hard to see here, but you'll definitely be able to hear it. So if I turn this, that shoot swings back and forth. It's a little stiff at the beginning, but as I've done it here a couple times, it's loosened up. So I think there are kind of plastic teeth in there that are kind of getting stuck. Now, the last thing we need to do is put this chute on. So what you might be able to see is there's just a little tab. So you're gonna slide this in. There's a little slot right there that has to index on another tab in the back that'll keep it squarely in place. I'm just twisting it a little bit to get it on there. And then we have a little screw hole right there. And in the bag, there is a screw with an Allen key. So we're just gonna put it in there and that's gonna hold this in place. Now, I just wanna correct myself. It's actually a Torx bit basically that will screw that down. So it doesn't really matter. But now most of this is together, but you can see this cable flops around. We have two of these cable clips right here. So you can put them wherever you need to just to hold this cable in place and out of the way, just kind of slip it over the cable. And then the little bump right there will hold the cable against the bar. So I'm gonna put those on. All right, now I think this thing is legit fully assembled. In terms of snowblowers, this is actually probably the easiest one that I've ever put together. I love the black, white, and orange. They're actually kind of a Jaguar racing color, which is kind of nice, but man, this is a nice looking snow thrower. Shoot up here, you can adjust the throw with this handle there. You can see all the hardware up here, this to adjust the chute. I think to start it, you would hit this button on the side and then pull the handle down to engage the auger. And then you can release the button. And then if you release this, that'll stop the auger. But you can see right here, we have the battery compartment. So both batteries would go in there and eject them like that. If we swing around to the front here, you can see we have a couple of lights right on the front, which is actually a really nice innovation. It puts a light where you need it. And then if we look down here on the auger, the thrower, you can see it's a big gray plastic two-bladed contraption. So that is probably gonna be pretty good at throwing that snow up here. If you have some of that lubricant that you put on snow blowers, this would probably be the time to do it, but I don't have any on me at the moment. So we are just going to try this as it sits and comes out of the box big plastic wheels. They are just freewheeling there on the back, but man, pretty compact, looks really nice. All right, so one thing that I do wanna point out here before I snow blow tomorrow is that it has been snowing already. I mean, this winter we've definitely had snow, but it's only been snowing like half an inch here, an inch there, a quarter inch there. But as you can see here, it hasn't been enough to shovel or snow blow, but I've just been driving over it. And because of that, we get a lot of this compacted snow ice, you know, that you get from just driving over stuff. And so there is going to be a of ice and snow kind of right on the bottom of the driveway that you know this snowblower is not going to be responsible for to be honest when it snowed i probably should have taken a quick shovel or something to it but you know when you become lazy like me you don't always do that so this is all the way down the driveway as you might be able to see here so that's just kind of how it is when you have you know, snowfall, but minimalish snowfall or accumulating snowfall. So tomorrow will be the first one where it's really going to be deep enough that you have to get it off the driveway or you could get stuck. So I hope I don't get stuck. But if we do, I got a snowblower. All right. So now we wait till tomorrow. All right. It's the next morning here and uh, the snow is still coming down a little bit. First of all, it's actually not that cold. It is kind of feels like rain and I would say that the snow is wet and heavy and this is actually probably going to be a pretty interesting test because this is snowball 
snow. I mean, it is compact and I could probably put this right up here and make that a little snowman. So that's what we've got here, kind of wet and heavy snow. I actually went in the back and measured some unmolested snow that's not drifting and it looks like we got just about eight inches. So this snowblower can do supposedly 10 inches and then do a 20 inch wide swath. Now, I don't think that means it can cut through super wet snow. It means that, you know, maybe you can cut through four or five inches of wet snow. And I have a much bigger driveway. These are also smaller batteries. So this is gonna be a really good test for a lot of you that have a standard length driveway. I'm just gonna see what I can do and I am sure I am absolutely positive that I'm going to run out of battery charge before I can do any significant portion of this driveway just because of how long it is and how wet and heavy and thick the snow is and that it's on the upper edge of what this snowblower can throw anyway. But that's good. You know, generally, how long of a driveway can be done with this thing? So let's get the batteries in and try it out. All right, so I got my two batteries here. They are all charged up. Let them power up overnight here. You can see the battery showing full charge. I'm gonna flip this up here and just show you how we install this. And looks like the little hole, the little hole right there, probably clips in there. So I'm gonna push this down like that. You can hear it click in. And now I am going to put the other one and the little holes right there. And the clip is on the inside here. So push that in, they clip in just like that. And now we will go ahead and see if this thing will fire up. So wear your protective gear. So I'm just gonna demo this here with one hand, but you would push this button in and then you would pull this bar back. And that will start the auger there. And we should be able to blow some snow. So, oh my gosh, it is already super chunky and thick. So I can tell you this might take me a little while, but let's give it a shot. So one of the things that I want to show you, and it's probably no surprise, is that if I just try to go at it, clear a 20-inch path through the snow, because of how heavy and wet this is, it does kind of bog this down. It, it can work, but it's kind of fighting through it. So what I realized here is that I kind of want to do half of the actual snow or capacity of the snowblower. If I run the snowblower with the snow right down the middle, then actually seems to throw it pretty good so just take less snow especially when it's big and wet and heavy a swath that is good enough to get my car out of the garage now. So what you can see here is it's probably about eight feet wide and I mean, more down to the pavement than I thought, especially when I showed you earlier how much ice there was, right? That ice built up right there is definitely significant. And as you can see, I was able to cut a path that's about eight feet wide and this snow is no joke, right? No joke. Um, goes up to my wrist here. Ooh, it's cold. It is cold. And uh, it is super chunky, heavy, and this is definitely a torture test for this thing. But what I love about this Litheli is that, man, I was able to cut eight feet in pretty short order without having to fire up a gas motor, without any fumes, without the noise. I noticed that the LED lights on the front here, they blink a few times when the battery's going dead. So it's a little hard to see because it's bright out right now. But if you were doing this early in the morning or in the dark, You'd probably see those lights flashing and that would be your indicator that the batteries are going to need another recharge here but this litheli despite it being little is pretty mighty and i think for most driveways especially if you have a two-car garage and you have you know 
10, 15, 20, 25 feet of driveway, even with pretty heavy, wet snow, you're gonna be able to throw it without much problem. And it's just gonna be nice to have something like this that is always ready, that you don't have to worry about, you know, how to start it up and maintain it and all that good stuff. So if you wanna pick up this Litheli, it's only a couple hundred bucks, and man, I think it is a steal. And if you have a bigger driveway, you could probably pick up some extra batteries and just throw those in and keep going. But man, I love it. I can get in and out of here, go and pick up a hot warm meal and curl up by the fire and watch Top Gun Maverick. So if you want to pick up this awesome little cordless snowblower, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.